Welcome to View from the North on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Jay Fidel. Today, we're going to talk about Vancouver, a city of international diversity, possibly a sanctuary for Americans. Our guest for the show is Dr. Ken Rogers, retired Canadian businessman. Welcome to the show, Ken. Hello, Jay. It's uh, good to see you. You know, you, you recently moved to Vancouver from Kelowna. And I'd like to know how it's been and what you've discovered there. I know you spent a lot of time there as, as a visitor over the years, but um, how does how does Vancouver appeal to you now? What's there that you like and what's there that Americans would like? I would think of uh, Vancouver. Uh, I lived in New York City, uh, in Brooklyn and in Manhattan, and I certainly like living in Vancouver better than either of those. I lived in Salt Lake City, Utah for a few years and uh, and really enjoyed it. Um, but uh, I like Vancouver better than uh, Salt Lake City. Um, I visited many cities in the United States and uh, and it would be uh, very, very, very difficult to have a nicer place than than Vancouver. You know, for example, uh, many Americans think very highly of Seattle. I really like Seattle, but compared to Seattle, I really love Vancouver. It is very, very difficult to pick a better place than Vancouver. Um, when you think of the status quo in the United States, where you have many people very concerned about uh, the idea that if Trump gets elected, the United States will not in any way resemble what they have come to love as the United States and that they would uh, feel that they better go somewhere else. Well, on an international basis, the, the country that is an American would consider to be most similar to the United States is probably Canada. And, uh, you know, the first trepidation most Americans would have about Canada is concerned that perhaps it would be too cold. You know, the weather would not be appropriate. Well, uh, the weather in, uh, you know, many parts of Canada are similar to in the U.S. That is, um, if you lived in Chicago, the weather in Toronto is better than the weather in Chicago. Um, if you, you know, like the weather in Detroit, it's very similar to all of Southern Ontario. Um, if you, you know, like the weather in, in uh, New York City uh, or Seattle, it's very similar to the weather in Vancouver. Uh, you know, if I were to pay, compare New York to Vancouver in the um, in the winter time, Vancouver is warmer than New York City, and in the summertime, uh, Vancouver is cooler than New York City. Uh, but the air is usually cleaner in Vancouver, and uh, <clears throat> so there are lots of reasons why. You know, an American that would be concerned if, uh, uh, with the Trump problem, should they, um, uh, you know, move to Canada? And uh, really, over many, many years, um, Vancouver has been a place where people who've been worried about political things in their area have, have moved to Vancouver. For example, uh, all of the Hong Kong mess. You know, metropolitan Vancouver is has about 350,000 people, primarily from Hong Kong, but let's call them Chinese. And, you know, when the first ones came, you know, 20 some years ago, you know, they, well, we had some Chinese before that, but we had a fairly good influx at that time. Well, once you get some people come, they communicate with those back home and it tends to attract more. Uh, similarly, we, we probably have, uh, uh, you know, well over 100,000 people from the Punjab, all of which have come in probably the last 10 or 12 years. Um, that, uh, you, you know, if you've seen, uh, you know, one of the ugly newscasts concerning the 
the country of India was that they actually sent out their Gestapo type force to kill a couple of these uh, Sikhs from, <laughs> because they, you know, wanted to have a, the Punjab to be a separate state in in uh, India. However, uh, you know, for an American to say, should you come to Canada in, if Trump wins, and if so, where in Canada? Well, you have to take uh, into account a lot of factors. Uh, you know, Canada is different than the United States. If you love your guns, you won't be welcome in Canada. You know, we, we don't have, you know, virtually no people keep a gun in their personal home. You know, our police forces are very well respected. The police forces really do a wonderful job of policing in Canada. The, the, you know, if you're stopped on a, a highway for a traffic violation or something, you know, the, the officer Cummings not pulling out his gun. You, you know, they don't get you to come out and put your hands in the side of a car and stretch out your feet and do a, do a search. Um, you know, a, another major difference in Canada is the, is the whole health care system. Nobody goes bankrupt in Canada because they have a major health problem. Our health care is a public funded system. It, it makes Obamacare or, you know, whatever the proper name of it is, uh, you know, it, it looks, you know, it's very second rate compared to what the Canadian system is. Um, you know, we have, um, you know, all of our drugs are very, very inexpensive. Uh, you know, many Americans, uh, you know, buy their drugs in, in Canada or Mexico simply because the American uh, system stinks. Uh, uh, <laughs> pardon me by saying that, uh, but really compared to almost all of the world, the American system on drug pricing is, is very uh, poor. Uh, now, Similarly, in Canada, uh, you know, many Americans might be politically uncomfortable is is we don't have the dramatic polarization that the U.S. has right now. But uh, also uh, the political parties in Canada are further left than the U.S., you know, much not as far left as the Scandinavian countries, you know, such as Denmark and Sweden, but but nevertheless, uh, we're further left than than the Americans. And another political factor, if you're a great fan for for your state being very different than some other states, such as in Mississippi, you can mistreat all the blacks and seem to get away with it. Um, the um, you know, or in Utah, you know, you probably have uh, you know the the most white state in the United States. There's probably a very very small percentage of their population is either you know Hispanic or black. Um, you know, in Canada, it, we're much more accepting about um, diversity. Um, you know perhaps the most diverse state in the United States of, of all that I've been in is Hawaii, uh, you know, it, where people are very acceptance of, of the mixture of people. And that is pretty consistent in Canada, and it's particularly so in Vancouver. Uh, you have other things that in Canada are, are important. Um, a, a very wealthy person doesn't have the same power in Canada as they do in the United States. You know, a, a wealthy person in Canada cannot buy uh, their political influence. You know, there is no uh, major, we don't have the PACs that the U.S. does in terms of wealthy people being able to hide the money they put into a, into a political in, politically influencing machine uh, and uh, and affect elections. Our elections are much shorter. Uh, you know, we have, you know, 60 days, they announce an election, all of the 
campaigning is done in that short period of time. Uh, when everything is completed, nobody's out contesting, you know, a very, very close election. Somebody may, ca you know, contest, we would like to have a recount, but it's a very peaceful matter. Um, you know, we don't have the, the concern about a peaceful transfer of power, which the United States now has. I don't know that you used to have, but you certainly do now. Um, the, <clears throat> Uh, you know, once you get through some basic factors about what are the big differences between Canada and the U.S., you'd say, well, why should, you know, would I be more comfortable in Canada or the U.S.? Uh, you know, one one example of, um, of a big difference is um, much like medicine, where in Canada, you know, there's a public support for uh, all Medicare. In Canada, all of the regular schools are public schools. The public education system is absolutely first rate. You, you know, for, for a wealthy person to wish to send their child to a private school, it's usually because the child has some kind of learning deficiency or something, and they need some special supplementary effort. The, the basic public schools are terrific. Similarly, the universities, uh, you know, nobody in Canada would would pay a huge amount of money to go to a private school uh, university because the public universities are absolutely the best there are, um, you know, in Canada. One might say, you know, I might get a better legal education in uh, in Yale or Harvard or, or New York University than I would, uh, you know, at... Uh, at some college in, you know, Outwater, Nebraska or something, but nevertheless, uh, you know, the, the, those are good. But uh, for an American that's concerned about, you know, having a problem with Trump, if you would happy, be happy to live in Seattle, you'd absolutely love Vancouver. You know, if you'd be happy in Portland, Oregon, you'd really be happy with Vancouver. Like, why is Vancouver so different? Why is it so coveted as a place to live in Canada? Is is there's a variety of factors. Um, you know, one of them um, is its diversity. Much like why do people enjoy visiting Hawaii? The diversity of culture is a, is a big thing. But if you're an outdoorsy person, uh, you know, in Vancouver, you could probably do more things more easily with a greater level of pleasure than almost anywhere on earth. You know, you cannot go to the beach for a swim in the middle of January, but you definitely can walk along the beach on a gorgeous public pathways that, you know, uh, Vancouver is blessed with um, being an ocean city, but not really being on an ocean. We kind of have a, a private inland ocean because we, uh, you know, to the west of Vancouver is an island that's about 350 miles long with some fairly good high mountains on that island. And so uh, the direct winds from the Pacific do not blow against the city of Vancouver. So, so if you compared it with all of the West Coast of the United States, you know, Seattle's a big city, but it is not right on the coast. You know, there's a fair amount of land between Metro Seattle and the coast. And they, uh, you know, the wealthy people like, uh, uh, you know, Bill Gates, he lives on in Seattle, but he lives on the shore of Lake Washington, an inland lake that's got to be, you know, maybe 80 miles from the Pacific Ocean. You know, and has a boat that chug along that indoor lake. Um, <clears throat> you know, similarly, if you go all the way along the coast, the Pacific coast, right on the Pacific Ocean, from Washington State, go all the way down, you know, to San Francisco. And, you know, the, the no cities have 
growing up right along the coast. Like Portland, Oregon is is a long way inland on you know on the uh, Columbia River, and and it's you know living on that coast is not so terrific. Where Vancouver has this almost this sort of inland ocean is between the big island I mentioned and the uh, mainland. Uh, you know there is this you know called Georgia Strait. And anybody that's taken a cruise ship to Alaska from Seattle uh, usually runs between Vancouver Island and Vancouver. And, and one of the key parts of that Alaska trip is how fantastic that area is for wildlife, for scenery. And, and it's just a, you know, an outdoorsy water person's dream. The the ocean is not as wild as the real ocean, um, and is not as scary as trying to go from from Oahu to the nearest next island if the weather just changes all of a sudden. Um, and similarly, if you're if you have children and they're outdoorsy, uh, you know the city in Canada that has uh, the most outdoor playgrounds for soccer, that you can play soccer 12 months a year in Vancouver. You rarely get snow. You probably have, you know, a half a dozen days a year in which, you know, there may be about one centimeter or let's call it half an inch of snow on the ground or more. And it, and it, it melts right away uh, so that, um, you know, kids play outdoor soccer in short pants in the middle of winter in Vancouver. Uh, and yet, you know, near, very nearby. Uh, in fact, uh, right above, like a mountain that rises from the north side of, of um, the city of Vancouver, you know, they held some of the Olympic skiing events. Uh, you know, one of the 10 best ski resorts in the world called Whistler, you know, is, is very handy for, you know, a, you know, an, an hour and a half drive from Vancouver and you're on the best skiing country, skiing uh, facilities in the world. Um, you're anybody that's a, a boating um, enthusiast, uh, Vancouver is a dream. So, um, you know, for an American that's worried about Trump, uh, a great place to uh, to consider would be uh, go to Vancouver. Well, what are the impediments, Ken? Um, you know, if I if I said to myself, "Oh my God, he won, and he's going to do vengeance, and he's going to wreck the democracy, and all those you know concerns that we would all have." Uh, even the Republicans would have if he won, got back into office, whether by a vote or some other methodology. Uh, and I decided I wanted to go to Canada. And I guess what you're saying is uh, Western Canada, Vancouver, is a better place to go than Eastern Canada, like Montreal or uh, Quebec or, or for that matter, Toronto. Um, what are the impediments? What are the obstacles that I would have um, to, you know, moving? Uh, to Vancouver and enjoying all all the things you just talked about. I might correct you for some people. Some people might like Toronto or Southern Ontario more than they would like Vancouver. You know, and, and a lot of things depend on the person, what they enjoy in life, um, and and why. Um, you know, Toronto is. You know the big city in Canada. If you if you like, you know New York and Los Angeles, and think you know you don't want to go to some podunk place, uh, you know Toronto may be your first pick. You know, and and if you really like diverse culture, you know Montreal, uh, you know has the French and English speaking. Side, it's like uh, you know New Orleans on steroids. Um, you know that it, it certainly might appeal to some people. Um, I just happen to be of the type that I like outdoor things. Uh, you know, if you want to do lots of walks, you want uh, 
you know, the neatest scenery on earth to walk on. Vancouver's um, virtually all the beaches um, areas you can have public access to. Um, you know, if you're um, Vancouver, you might not like because it's pricey. You know, as I as I understand it, uh, you know, the priciest places in the United States, like Honolulu, you know, Boston, New York City, you know, well, Vancouver is probably the priciest place in Canada. Mm. I, should, I shouldn't say probably, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what what trouble would I have getting there? Um, uh, certainly, it's uh, easy to get to because it's uh, close to Seattle. It's close to the U.S. It's not like I would have to go 500 miles across the tundra uh, <laughs> to get to Vancouver. Well, it's right there. The the metropolitan uh, area of Vancouver, actually, the southern side of it is the U.S. border. You know, one yeah. of the, let's call it a community that's part of metropolitan Vancouver called White Rock is actually right on the border. You know, the the, <laughs> the city limit is the U.S. border. What about the, uh, the whole notion of uh, immigration and migrants, you know, from the U.S. or from elsewhere? Um, how, how, um, how much control does the Canadian government or the provincial government, for that matter, um, put on people who want to immigrate, uh, well, including right, people from the U.S. Well, right now, immigration is a very important political problem in Canada. You know, not quite the degree of scale in the U.S. Uh, by scale, I mean in terms of how hot the people are about it as a problem. You know, most of the Canadians don't think of it as much of a problem. They, they're they seeing that there's a uh, housing shortage and, you know, um, <clears throat> a couple other problems that they're blaming on immigration. Well, it's because we've had a, a huge amount of immigration. I mean, in, in one year, the population of Canada increased 6% from just the number of immigrants that came in. Well... If you put that in the perspective of the U.S., that's like 20 million coming to the U.S. And your your scale of immigration is not the same scale as ours, you know. But our immigration system is is, uh, or let's call it, it used to be. And in theory, like ignoring the short term problem that we've had, our system is based on a point system. So if you um, are very fluent in English or French, uh, the, your odds of being accepted more quickly are much higher. Number two, um, what is your economic ability? If you could be a contributor of something important um, that we're particularly where Canada may have a shortage of people, for example, if you were a a medical doctor, you could probably get in more quickly than than the next person, you know. But um, uh, you know, people that are in things like the professions, like medicine or law, uh, Canada, the same as the U.S., has has the lawyers' union and the and the medical doctors' union. I use the word union because really they're professional societies are really one step worse than a union in terms of just because you're an american with a one with a law degree doesn't mean they would let you come into canada and quickly become a canadian lawyer you know do a few tests and prove that you could do the basic law that just won't count but anything else you know if you were a plumber you know that would be pretty quick. But if you're a, you know, have a um, master's degree in computer science, you know, they would kiss you and probably almost pay you to come to Canada. You know, that, 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 that I'm exaggerating the idea, but our point system is what can you do to contribute to our society 
the one thing that we have the problem with in our current immigration is that um, the corporations, uh, you know, made a lot of noise and saying, oh, we're having really a lot of trouble getting uh, all of these grunt jobs, you know, the poorest jobs in society done. We can't, we can't get enough waitresses. We can't get enough, you know, kitchen helpers for restaurants. We can't get people who will clean houses and we can't get people who will pick, pick, uh, you know, grapes or cherries or something in the orchards. Uh, we can't get people to help in the farm areas. Well, by letting in a flood of those people, you know, economically, really what you do is you've encouraged lower priced wages at the bottom of the rung. And that affects everything going up. And, and Canada has recently had a significant reduction in terms of other countries of the world in its productivity per person because of that immigration policy of having allowed corporations to complain that they can't get people for these low-priced bottom-of-the-rung jobs and, and letting a flood of immigrants in in that regard. You know, similarly, we had a bunch of people come because Canada's universities are, are so good that, that foreigners are really pleased to send their children to, to Canadian universities. But then when you want to start to stretch that and, and you have, um, you know, they're not quite Trump University scale of scams, but you have a lot of schools where they will use the idea that Canada will let a foreign student in pretty easily, but then they have the student taking one course and and they really have a job somewhere, you know, and, and that's, you know, spoiled those, that side of things. But, what about but becoming a, a, a citizen? You can, you know, you can come in, you can show the points and all that, but how how long a wait is it and how what's the obstacles to becoming a Canadian citizen? If someone seeks to make a permanent change and seek, you know, lifetime sanctuary in Canada, such as a lot of uh, uh, Vietnam draftees did back back in the, uh, I guess, the 60s. They're all Canadian citizens now. We don't have any, uh, whatever they're called, dreamers or DACAs or whatever, you know, a, a child born in Canada is a Canadian. And um, the our path to citizenship is an awful lot easier than the United States. The one thing you mentioned that I'd like to pursue is is the question of housing, because when I was last in Vancouver, which I totally agree is a beautiful, beautiful, clean, safe, aesthetic, comfortable quality of life kind of city. Uh, in, in in my view, it's uh, actually better quality of life in general than Honolulu, which I like very much. But that the uh, the question is um, a lot of people on the street, a lot of uh, homeless people, and housing is not cheap, and so forth. So if I'm seeking sanctuary, I'm also looking for a place to live. Um, what is that? What is what are the challenges there? I might might correct a, a little bit of what you said in terms of like. The homelessness in Vancouver is, you know, it is a problem, and it's being remedied fairly well, you know, more so than one of our prior shows on on Think Tech Hawaii about the homelessness was is because Vancouver has such better weather than the parts of Canada that are on the east side of the Rocky Mountains. Now, the Rocky Mountains in Canada are closer to the Pacific coast than they are in the U.S. That is, you know, if you, you know the, the only province on the west side of the Rocky Mountains is British Columbia. So everybody on the east side of the Rockies, whenever, you know, has co much colder weather in the winter, um, you know, because of the northern, um, let's call it Arctic winds blow primarily on the east of the Rockies. It's very rare you get an Ar Arctic 
blow into the Vancouver, Seattle kind of area. Um, but uh, anybody that's going to be homeless, you know, will try to make it to Vancouver, you know, so that we have the, uh, an extra load of people from elsewhere coming here, you know, and then BC having and Vancouver having the problem to try to fix it. Just see me as an ordinary person uh, who would like to come and, and live and be a citizen ultimately of Canada. And I have uh, chosen Vancouver for many good reasons. But can I get can I get an apartment? Can I buy a house? What stands in the way? Uh, is it is it expensive? Is it is it uh, are there bureaucratic delays and permitting delays and the like? Or can I can I just uh, get housing? You can get housing in Vancouver, but Vancouver's housing is the most expensive in Canada. It's pretty close to Toronto, but it isn't as bad as many U.S. cities. Um, now the um, people who have have come to Vancouver for sanctuary, you know, has normally started with very wealthy people. Vancouver has, uh, you know, probably as a percentage of population, a higher percentage of very wealthy people than anywhere else in Canada. And, and certainly, uh, you know, at a scale like New York City is in, in the United States, um, that, uh, <clears throat> you know, we have uh, areas, uh, like a huge area on, you know, in Vancouver, uh, generally called British properties or the North Shore, you know, probably has more millionaires per square inch than anybody anywhere on earth almost, uh, other than perhaps the middle of Manhattan. Um, <laughs> now, so your housing question is you have a phenomenal selection if you have some money. You see, it's a, it's a question of pricing. Well, if you properly if you're an american concerned about trump you know and and you're looking for a sanctuary place you don't need to think of vancouver as as just the narrow center city uh you know when you think of of either seattle or portland you know they are not at all a west coast city like vancouver because uh, Seattle has mountains. The the coast range is is right on the west side or east side of Seattle, and the and the city's expansion is kind of in, in a north south stretch. You know, the, the, you can't move inland. Well, Vancouver has a very large valley that runs for about a hundred miles to the west of Vancouver, and so that if you come as a really ordinary citizen and you, you know, you concerned about the price of housing, you know, there are phenomenal, neat, wonderful communities that I call, you know, the Vancouver Lower Mainland Area, you know, call it Vancouver and 100 miles west of it, all in this valley. Uh, and the cost of living and such things are are significantly different. You know, the minute you get out of the uh, you know the center city, or or as I call it, this uh, North Shore with the with the many many millionaires, um, <clears throat> so that you you can get a pretty good diversity, but but still. Um, you know, it is not a, a cheap area, but somebody with um, the economic prospects that would enable them to be an attractive immigrant to C Canada's immigration system certainly can make a good living in Vancouver and pay for a reasonable place to live. One other thing you mentioned I'd like to pursue is this notion of the um, the social support for the people who live in Canada. And, and that means, uh, you know, you won't, you won't be on the street starving. Uh, it means that you, you will have medical care. Uh, it means that the government will take care of you. 
as as is the case in in Europe uh, to a large extent, and in other Commonwealth or formerly Commonwealth countries. Um, and how does that work for somebody who wants to seek sanctuary uh, in Canada? If I if I cross the border, am I immediately entitled to all of those um, very kind social benefits, or do I have to wait or work for it? There's a wait period for everything, but none of it is as onerous as it, as is the case in the United States. Um, you know, you can get unemployment insurance uh, if you have a job and you work for a certain length of time. The rule is not different whether you just arrived from Hong Kong or or from uh, you know Maui. Uh, you know, your your time frame is similar. Um, the uh, health plan system works the same way. You know, when you're here and you've been here for a few months, you can qualify for the medical system. Uh, um, the country does have, you know, a variety of rules and precautions. So you don't, you know, simply get somebody else's freeloaders. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, much like the, uh, Texas and, and, uh, DeSantis, uh, sending, you know, purposely, you know, paying for a bus to ship all of their, uh, unwanted, uh, you know, South American, uh, immigrants to, you know, Martha's Vineyard or somewhere absurd, um, you know, but mainly to the cities in the north, just to kind of rub in the idea that uh, you know they th they don't want the burden of of that amount of immigration. Well, that actually raises another and my last question to you. Um, you know, government in in the United States has sort of, in many places, has turned ugly, um, and you don't get the feeling that government cares or gives a rip. Um, about your welfare and your quality of life and whether you live or die. Um, and, and, and it's just sad to see that because, you know, in, in olden days, um, that really wasn't the case. And people cared, seems to me, more about their neighbors. And, and government cared more that, that everyone would be okay. Um, and that now we have um, a different kettle of fish in many places, including including the whole uh, abortion scene, which um, is, is very unpleasant for women. And, and I wonder, you know, if you see a distinction um, between the way government works, the way mm, the community, the social society works in Canada and in Vancouver, as to caring for the way people live and the quality of their lives. And I, and I, and I fold into that, of course, the question of abortion. Your thoughts? I was really pleased to watch the um, Democratic Convention. Uh, the convention uh, exhibited a lot of hope. You know, the, the human element was there. <clears throat> uh, in Canada, we tend to be that way all the time. You know that that's the difference is is we don't have uh, the parties being as ugly to one another to total distrust. You know the idea of you know Joe Biden always used a phrase of, of being proud of being able to work across the aisle, like John McCain type of work across the aisle person. In Canada, you tend to have that. Uh, particularly the citizenry at large, as opposed to just the politician. Citizenry kind of keeps the politicians more civil, rather than in the United States, the politicians make the public less civil, mm -hmm. seemingly. Um, an item that, that might be a good example is why do so many Americans, when they're traveling, say they're Canadians. You know, particularly if you look at uh, the Caribbean and, and South America traveling, where I found 
myself sitting with people with a little Canadian flag on their on their jacket or their sweater or, or their hat, you know, or their swim trunks and, you know, and so I asked, so oh, where are you from? And, you know, and then mumble, mumble, and pretty soon you find out they're from Chicago or St. Louis or something. <laughs> um, you know, and, and why do they? And it's because Canadians are generally just more gracious to one another or more civil. Uh, we don't carry a gun. We don't feel that we're threatened by our neighbors. So, you know, we do have many of the same problems the U.S. does. We have a drug problem, but, you know, there's a compassion. Uh, you know, our, uh, if you wanted to immediately get voted out of office in any any constituency in Canada, just say you're against abortions. It's that simple. Like, like there's not <laughs> a single jurisdiction. It doesn't matter whether you've got the most the most conservative part of Canada you would just be run out of town as fast as you opened your mouth. <laughs> That's very touching. It's all very touching. It's all very appealing, Ken. Importantly, Canadians are perfect, but we try to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you try. There are so many people in this country try to be just the opposite. Well, thank you, Ken. Let's circle back and and learn more about this. I, I, I you paint a picture that's really that's really uh, very appealing. It's Dr. Ken Rogers, a retired Canadian businessman, now living in Vancouver, uh, who can talk about you know what is happening there and across Canada.